tools used to communicate effectively, phones, video conferencing, and other digital tools. So a variety of technology may be used within organizations to allow workers to communicate with one another. These days, businesses may have colleagues and clients interact on a global scale, as well as work remotely from home. For these reasons, as well as general convenience, adequate tools need to be used by organizations in order to support their nature of work. So what we're going to take a look at in this video is a few of these tools that can allow us to interact with people, uh, breaking down the boundaries of geography and allow us to work from home and on a global scale. So the first one we'll take a look at is that of a phone. A mobile phone is a multi-purpose device that is capable of a variety of functions. Mobile phones are more than just phones, aiding users in the following ways. They allow users to communicate through phone calls, messaging apps, social media and conferencing software. They can collect data through their camera, microphone and touchscreen technology used in conjunction with apps in order to complete work. And they even have sensor technology and scanning technology on them too, allowing them to obtain data in different ways through objects that are around the community as well for ease of convenience. And they also contain a calendar and scheduling apps that allow users to organize themselves. So as said, they're not just a phone. They have so much more functionality behind it in order to support the quality of life and the work of their user. Building on upon this, okay, phones can connect to networks using Wi-Fi connections via wireless accent points, as well as use 4G and 5G networks. Bluetooth technology also allows communications to be made between the phone and other devices, such as headsets, speakers, and other wireless devices in order to increase functionality. So we're not even just using the phone, we can actually link our phone to our other hardware, and it can actually even add further convenience to using the technology there too. And through connecting to a variety of different networks, if I can't get onto one network, I might be able to use another style of network in order to communicate with my peers. So they are just, fantastic multi-purpose devices that we actually take for granted and they allow us to do so much work at our fingertips. All right, so that is the advantages and how great phones are as a tool for communication. The other actual tool that has really emerged over the past few years is that of video conferencing. Okay, it's a type of teleconferencing system which allows a meeting to occur in the same time in different locations. And by teleconferencing, we're saying we can actually work from home. Okay, and actually breaks down the need to transport to work in order to do work. And video conferencing does this through allowing participants in different locations to see video images of each other on screen and hear each other speak. And that's done through streaming video and audio through a network such as the internet, which is kind of binding it all together. From here, video conferencing has a variety of tools that help not just with the actual conference itself, but the sharing of information and the communication between the different members of the meeting. These tools include live streaming of video, audio, and from multiple participants in different locations through the internet. So all the participants might be in all different geographical locations, and they're all communicating through sharing video and audio data. It also allows for the sharing of documents and files through the online platform. So if they're working on a project together, the files can usually be shared through that platform too. You can use filters to add privacy and branding to the environment. So you can hide your background and where you are through blurring or adding an actual skin to your background so people can't see what's behind you or put your corporate logo in your background so people know where you work and add a bit of formality and professionalism to your online environment when video conferencing. You have the ability to mute image and audio so you can actually hide your face and hide your voice okay when participating in a conference and this also allows for a bit of structure to be given to the conference too because we don't want everyone speaking at the same time so we do want to mute people so they don't accidentally talk and take the focus off the speaker this is also further supported through a chat program that's usually built into the video conferencing software as well as symbols that allow users to raise their hand or give their emotion in relation to what's being said so they can still provide provide communication feedback without actually taking over the actual audio and speaking when someone else is speaking to help further control the actual participation in the online meeting. Okay, and finally, there's the ability to set up rooms or what's known as in a lot of the software's breakout rooms where a large team can break down into smaller teams and work in uh, private rooms in order to complete their own sub projects. And then they can all meet back in the main room to discuss as well. So it can have a lot of control in the video conferencing environment and really try to emulate how it would be in a real environment there too. So 
video conferencing software, it really kept the world going over the last few years and its tools have come a long way and really made it a very feasible option for completing work uh, from home as opposed for the need to going to an office. The final things we'll look at here are just other tools that also support communication. And these include things such as email, instant messaging apps, social media, online and cloud-based platforms, which all allow workers to communicate and share information in real time through established networks. Okay, so some of these you'd already be using all the time, such as email, instant messaging, and social media, which allow users to interact, whether through instant messages that can be sent straight away, or an email where I can bulk send a message and attachments to multiple other users. Social media, even outside of organizations, allows people to stay in touch with each other and keep up to date with each other. But social media can also be useful business and allow business to expand online and interact with customers allowing them to find an actual business online and see their online presence and obviously cloud-based platforms are really large at the moment through things such as Apple's iCloud Google Drive Dropbox and really allow a central location to be developed where users within an organization can all share information and work on the same docs clarity allowing for work to take place so I hope this video has given you a good introduction to tools that can be used to communicate effectively specifically digital tools and really the advantages they bring to the table and allow users to work in online environments things we take for granted such as our phones which have so much functionality and now video conferencing allowing us to meet online but just as good nearly as face-to-face -face there so I hope this gives you a bit of an understanding of all these different tools